Tail today. My name is Shaylin and this is the third unit of my Fallelujah quilt that I'm going to be sharing today. So far I've made two which are on each side of me. On this side is the Maple Leaf unit, that was my first one, and then the Baskets unit is the second. I will make sure to link the playlist at the end that's showing the Fallelujah quilt come together. If this is your first time seeing this series or you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm creating a fall themed quilt as I go using Riley Blake Designs Shades of Autumn fabric line by My Mind's Eye. And so I had mentioned in my last video that I would be trying a new form of applique that I haven't done before, and that is needle turn applique. I've done the fusible kind before, um, so this is a new method for me, and so you'll get to see the process of me trying to figure out what works best, and I'll share the first way I tried as well as the second which ultimately ended up being my preferred method. In this unit I'm making a pair of acorns with an oak leaf and so I made a little template for that and I'll show you the different ways that I tried to applique them and then you'll get to see the final product at the end after some different considerations and things that I hadn't anticipated. I made some adjustments to my original plan so you'll get to Hear that thought process and if you end up doing this pattern it might be some things that you consider also as you make your selections so with that let's get started all right I'm gonna start by cutting two background squares out and so far I've just folded my fabric selvage to selvage cut the selvage ends off and then I just cut down the middle where that natural fold was and then I ironed with best press and so now I'm just going to trim it down to a square that's about a half inch larger than the unfinished size I need and the reason for that is because as I'm doing the applique if the fabric gets tugged in a little or just doesn't stay completely flat I can have some extra to make sure that I get the unfinished side that I need and also if I don't center my objects the oak leaf and the acorns exactly where I want them to be I have a little flexibility where I can trim off you know a little off of one side to try to center it more so this will get trimmed down more after the pieces have been appliqued on but for now I just want to make sure that I have a good square to work with so I'm going to do this for both pieces and I'm just lining up with the edge of my ruler all right so I put my background pieces aside for now and now I want to talk about applique options. So one method I've done before that's worked really well is fusible applique. You can get a pack of fusible webbing. Looks kind of like this. It's a little ribbed on one side, the glue side, and then it's just smooth on the other. I used a pack called Flexi Fuse, but I'm sure they make all kinds of others. So you'd want to follow the directions including you know what sides to be pressing together but basically you would trace your shape i had done this bunny before i just cut out a bunny silhouette and i traced it onto the fusible webbing and um, pressed the fabric on cut the fabric out so i got this little fabric bunny here and then let me show you what you would do with it after that point. I just had to put the camera down. But the smooth side would be facing you. The rib side is on the back side of the fabric. And you just pull it off and you see there's a sheen on the back. So there's still glue on the back of the fabric now. And then you would press that onto your background fabric and it would stay in place. And from there you could do different kinds of stitches. I've hand stitched a blanket stitch using a couple strands of 
embroidery floss. Um, I used a bright contrasting color to show an outline in this example with a cupcake. And then I also put the bunny on a quilt just in the corner. And I used my machine to zigzag stitch. You can pick a decorative stitch um, in a color that matches. In this case, I did black. Um, I just zigzagged around the whole thing slowly. And so that's another option. If you don't want the stitches to show as much or you want to use your machine, you can find a decorative stitch that catches the raw edge of the fabric that you cut out and the background fabric. And then the long armor just quilted with white thread some little details like the inside of the bunny's ear and the um, leg and such. So that's one option. But I'm going to be doing something called needle turn applique today. Now needle turn applique is great if you don't want the stitches to show at all. You want to hide them. And full disclosure, I have never done this before and I haven't watched any videos on it. I'm just going to do what makes sense to me based on what I've learned through English paper piecing and applicating those um, extravaganza blocks I've been working on to background fabric. So for needle turn applique, you're going to want freezer paper and make sure it's freezer, not parchment, because freezer has a glossy side that sticks to the fabric and then it has just a regular paper side. So you're going to want to be able to iron it to your fabric and stick. And then you're going to need your applique patterns printed out. You're going to make two units. So these are the acorn units. This is a picture of them just put together to see what they look like. You could also use this one if it's easier to cut out the two pieces. And then also two of the oak leaves. And you might decide you want to put more acorns in your bunch or maybe more than one leaf. So that's what's nice about this is you can decide how many leaves and acorns you want in each unit. But I'm gonna start with the leaf because I have the most fabric of that so in case I mess up and need to readjust how I do it I have some spare fabric so we'll start with the leaf fabric I'm going to set the camera down now so I can show you my plan all right so I'm going to start by putting my template down I'm going to need a pencil and the freezer paper and I'm going to start by putting the shiny side up the sticky side because I want that to attach to the fabric. Um, I'm going to just stick scissors here to kind of hold that down. I'm just going to use a pencil and trace. Again, I am on the shiny side of the freezer paper. And so I will just go around and trace. I'm trying to keep my arm from just totally covering the camera here, so I'm kind of doing this at a weird angle. All right, so I've got that traced. Again, on the sticky wax side, because when I put the fabric down and cut it out, I want it going in this direction. Um, so just pay attention to which side you're putting it on, otherwise you might end up with a reversal. So now I'm going to cut along my drawn line. I'm gonna take my leaf, and I have the shiny side down and the plain paper side facing up. I'm going to take my iron and it's on a low setting and you could try on a low heat setting to iron directly on the paper. I'm going to flip it over and just hold this in place. Flip it and I'm going to iron on the fabric. Just give that a try first. And so I don't have this on my hottest setting. Figure you can always go hotter, but just try it and see um, if a lower setting works. Okay, so I'm just ironing all around. And then when I turn it over, if it's not completely ironed on, yeah, I can see it held well there, but not here. So maybe I'll try on the paper now. Yeah, 
And just hold it for a few seconds. We don't want any burning, but we want it to adhere. Okay, so I can see that it's stuck on there doesn't come off. It will peel off later. So now what I'm going to do is cut out about a quarter inch around. And down here where I have this thin stem, I'm going to do a little, I still want it to be able to turn under, but not quite a quarter inch because I, I won't have enough room to fold that over. It'll be too big. So I'll make it go a little thinner around here. So here's my leaf with a little bit um, of fabric extending past the template. Here's what it looks like on the back. And so I know that it's oriented the right direction. My acorns are gonna hang down here, so that's good. So now what I'm gonna do is start pressing the seam allowance over. And so I'm going to make little snips to help fold, um, not going right to the paper edge, just stopping short of it. But I'm going to just kind of follow the curve and take my iron and just give it a press to fold it down. And I might, if this doesn't hold very well, in fact, maybe I'll turn the heat up a bit. Um, if it doesn't hold flat very well, because this side isn't sticky, um, I might even use like the sew line glue pen that I use for or for English paper piecing just on the very edge. I don't want it to be where the needle is going to go and gum up my needle when I sew later, but that might be an option too if it's not holding. But We'll just try this. Again, I'm just doing what makes sense to me. And I'll just keep pressing as I go, watching my fingers and following that template. So just little snips because I want to keep the shape of my leaf and all those curves intact. And if something's too bulky, you can always trim it. You just want enough to um, go under the shape so you can sew with your needle. I'm just going to flip it over on this side and see how it's looking. So. Um, as I'm sewing this, I can still roll it a little more if there's kind of a pointy edge. But I just want to make sure that it's yeah, rolling under the edge. And so that's looking good. So I'm just going to keep going. I don't need to film the whole thing, but I'll show you what to do when you're done. So again, I'm just trying to iron a crease so I can turn it over and know where my needle's gonna go when I applique this onto the background fabric. So I just want creases in there and a mini iron is really handy for small folds like this. But I already went ahead and snipped ahead here so I can uh, just keep keep pressing and not have to stop to snip. So I've gone all the way around and you can see some of my pieces have unfolded but the goal is to have a crease there. So if I turn it around I do see that crease line and I could turn it under like this and let's try to crease it from the top too. That's another option. But you just want to get those crease lines in there so you know um, where you're going to stitch. 
this paper peels off and it doesn't stick down here so it does peel off though and you can just use the same template if you don't rip it. I'm going to go ahead and do the acorn pieces the exact same way and then we'll talk about assembling but just make sure that you can see crease lines so when you go to stitch it onto the background you know where to sew and turn under. one more method um, since I'm just kind of experimenting as I make this pattern and so I have the acorn I cut it out the same way I would have um, before with the shiny side up and you know the last way I did it I would just press it and trim around it but I'm gonna try another method here where I trace it and this is where template plastic might come in handy so I'm not actually going to um, fuse this on with the iron but I do want to hold it in place carefully and if I reversed it I could iron this down so it doesn't move but I'm just like I said experimenting here I'm using pencil because it will wash out and I can see it on this but depending on what your fabric looks like, what how dark it is, you might use some other kind of marking tool that will wash out. But I'm just going to trace around the acorn. And so I can see it on there. And now I'm going to cut a quarter inch around. And my idea with this one is just to fold and turn it um, as I'm sewing on the pencil line. So when I'm applicating it on the background, I'm just wondering if that would be faster and perhaps get me a more accurate shape. So I'm gonna try that way as well. So now I'm going to just, I'll start just so I'm not dealing with as much fabric. Cut this out, I'm gonna save this piece for my next unit which is going to be scrappy pumpkins so let me just cut that off and put it aside to use and then like i said just about a quarter inch away from the pencil line and this piece has a lot less curves going around it than the oak leaf so that by itself is going to be faster but Let's just see what will happen. Okay, so there's that piece. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the acorn top on my dark brown fabric. Okay, I put a little bit of sandpaper underneath. Um, like I do with English paper piecing, just to help with slipping. I'm doing dark brown here, so I'm going to use my white chalk pencil. Um, it says water soluble marking pencil I should say and I'm just gonna trace around I also labeled the backs of the acorns like this is the second acorn so I put a two on the back of the top and bottom so when I reuse these pieces I don't mix up the pieces This is going to be the approximate positioning of the oak leaf and acorns. And so when I was positioning, I know that the larger acorn is going to extend past the leaf here. And so what I was just looking for is that the distance between the top of the leaf and the edge is about the same distance from the bottom of the acorn and the edge. And then same thing from the farthest side of the acorn to the edge, farthest side of the leaf to the edge. I just want it to be kind of centered that way. So I'm going to start by pinning and sewing the oak leaf down since there is going to be some overlap. We want to put the ones that are farthest on the bottom, sew them first. 
So I might use a little bit of that Soline glue pen to hold it down and I'll pin outward. I have removed the freezer paper from the back of it. All right, so if I glue, I'm gonna put just a couple dots of glue toward the middle of the leaf, not anywhere where my needle's gonna go because I don't wanna gum that up, but I'm just placing little dots just to hold it in place. I might even put one on the stem. I'm going to put it on the back of the stem since it's so skinny. So just a few dots of glue. And then if you pin, you want to make sure it's smoothed out. I'm just going to stick a pin in like that. And again, we want to keep it smooth. This one I'll pin away. I'm just pinning toward the outside edge of the shape just to keep it from puckering. So as you're pushing it through, you're kind of pulling the fabric outright so it's not going to pucker. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I have room to sew though. I might put a little one right in the stem as well to hold that in place. Now as far as thread, you could get one that matches, so I could look for a dark green in this case. You can just use a regular 40 or 50 weight cotton thread. I'm going to use the thread I've been using to do my English paper piecing, which is 80 weight. This is called Wonderfill thread, and I'm just going to use a neutral color. It's a little skinnier, and I've just had better luck appliquing my English paper piece um, to the background. So I'm going to do the same thing. I know that this hides well. It's a neutral color if it does show a little bit. And it doesn't tangle at all so far since I've used it. So that's why I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to move the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to fold my pieces where I ironed that crease. And I'm just going to pick a starting point to send my needle up and through. I want it to come up through both the background and the leaf fabric just on the edge. Pull till I feel the knot catch. And then I'm going to go back down and you'll want to keep your hand under to make sure that you're going through both layers. But I'm going to go back down near the same spot and then come up a little bit through both layers of fabric. Go back through the background fabric where I came up from and then come up again through both layers. So when I go down I'm just going through the background fabric. When I come up I'm going through both layers of fabric. And I want to just keep oops, I got caught there. I want to just keep turning my seam allowance under as I go. So those little snips that we made earlier will help keep those curved under. And be careful that I'm not puckering the background fabric. It should feel smooth as I go around. But that's why we also trimmed it a little larger so you can trim it down to size if some puckering does happen. Just keep turning it under and going around, down through the background, up through both layers, staying close to the edge so I'm catching my seam allowance. So I'm at a point where I'm running low on thread. I have um, about a couple inches, but I don't want to risk um, not being able to knot it off. So I'm going to stop here for a moment and I just want to point out you can see the nice little curve um, stays intact because of those snips. Every 
you know, quarter or half inch or so, the snips are there and that just makes it easy to fold them under. Um, I can see there's a little bit of puckering going on. I should be able to iron that out um, before I trim it down to the unfinished size that I need, but for the most part it is going really well. Um, I also want to point out when you're, you know, you might have the corner kind of tucked under as you're sewing, just make sure you always know where those corner pieces are so you're not accidentally sewing them down. But when you're ready to tie off, whether you're at the very end or you just need to change out your thread, I have just come up through both layers and I'm going to go back down through the background fabric like I would um, anyway. And then I'm going to turn it over. Make sure you can see that in the camera. I'll turn it over and just pull it lightly here. And then I'm going to just take a little stitch, not through both layers, but just through the background fabric and underneath my leaf here um, and I can check on the other side make sure that I don't see the needle poking through but just a really tiny bite because then I'll just put my needle under the loop and I know that's probably hard to see with this color thread but I just go under the loop and then tie it off and just a gentle tug and I can do that one more time just to secure it again just where I came out from, go back in very close, just going through the background fabric only. Oh, that came out of my needle, but I can still do this. So I'm going to take that end piece and go under the loop and just pull it taut and then trim it off. And then I just start another piece like I did at the beginning, just come up maybe a stitch or two before I cut off here and continue sewing. But I can see my little outline of the leaf there. And I'm just gonna make sure I stop more frequently to smooth out and try to avoid those puckers. But that's why we cut it a little bigger than the actual size that we need. All right, the leaf is appliqued on with just a little bit of puckering. So I'm going to iron this fabric out, just press the leaf so that the acorns are ready to go on. You might want to embroider some of the veins of the leaves on there if you study oak leaves. Um, you might have a line that follows the stem to the top and then just branch lines out toward the curved edges. I chose not to do a solid color print. I liked this one that had kind of the yellowish grid because looking at the leaves I saw they have little um, the veins going in the leaves are kind of yellow too so I thought that would give it a little bit of texture and interest. Um, if you did a solid colored green leaf, you might want to embroider um, some of those vein patterns on there. But again, I'm just going to go ahead and iron this flat again. And you'll want to do that each time um, you would applique something on, get it flat again. But let's position our next acorn. So I put both acorns back just to kind of show what's going to happen. We're going to do the smaller acorn next because it's going to overlap with the leaf. And remember this is seam allowance on here too. So these two acorns won't be touching but their seam allowances might when you lay them out. So this larger acorn is going to attach to the end of the oak leaf so it's not just floating you know, by itself, they'll be connected. And then this acorn is going to overlap the leaf a bit and be up higher on the stem of the leaf. So because of those seam allowances, you have to kind of line the chalk line up 
with a pencil line to see where it goes, we're actually going to applique the orange piece on first, and then the cap is going to get sewn over it. So we want to make sure that those are in a good position because the cap will come next. We just want to make sure that the cap is going to connect to the stem. So watch that it's not the seam allowance that you're trying to connect, but the chalk lines. So I think that looks good. I'm going to just put a little bit of glue under this orange piece here. We'll take this off for now. So this will be the next piece we applique. Now this time I did not cut and press these under. So what I'm going to do this time is just snip um, in a few places along the curve to try and fold under at the pencil line and just see if that way is easier. So being careful not to move the orange piece. I'm just going to put little dots of glue away from where my needle is going to go, so not underneath the pencil lines. Just a few to tack it in place. And again, I can put a pin through, smoothing it out as we go. And again, we point it toward the outside of the shape so that way we can smooth it out. Alright, so now I'm going to take my scissors and just snip not up to the pencil line, but just close to the pencil line. I'll give it a few snips just to help follow the curve, stopping short of the pencil line. And I know this part up here is going to get covered with the cap eventually, but I still want to make sure it's appliqued on there nicely. I'm just going to turn this around so I can keep snipping. So there's a close up of the snips. And now I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to sew but fold under to the pencil line, like so, and so, and as I get close to the next one, just fold it under. I'm trying to do this one-handed, but I'll make my way around as I sew. So I'm gonna just do the same thing. I came up through the bottom, through both layers. I'm folding on the pencil line, and I'm gonna go down through the background fabric, and then up through both layers, close to the edge down through the background fabric, just taking small little bites as I come up close to the edge. Trying to hide those stitches, making sure that my fabric feels smooth underneath me. If I feel some puckers or bunching, I want to straighten those out. And then as I get close to where I snipped, I will just fold under again Trying to keep a smooth line there, and then I'll just keep going. So under, through the background fabric, and up through both layers. And because I'm turning it under, that pencil line disappears and lets me know where to roll it to when I'm turning the needle. So I see some pencil there. I'm going to just give it a little roll again. And just keep going all the way around, being careful not to pull too tight because we don't want the edge of our acorn to pucker. Just wanted to share a tip when you're doing a really small curve, like the tip of the acorn here, the easiest way I was able to do it was to do lots of little snips close together. So most of these, when I'm folding an edge under, I can do a few stitches you know, three, four, five stitches before I need to fold the next piece over. With this little tip, it was like fold, stitch once, fold the next one, stitch once, fold the next one, stitch once, all the way around. So the snips were very close together to get that tip. Alright, so once again, I'm just going to press and 
a lot of times I get impatient or I just feel like I'm ironing and I want to start just moving back and forth so I have to remind myself patiently press because I don't want to stretch any fabric here. Now, if you have a lighter fabric that you've appliqued on, on top of a darker background, that's not the case here, but let's say this acorn was a white or cream, and so I was getting a shadowing effect and the background was showing through, you could turn this over and pull the background fabric away, just feel it come apart and make a little snip with some sharp scissors, being very careful not to cut through all, but then just cut so that you're a quarter inch away from your stitch line all the way around. Just cut out a little bit of that acorn. Or same thing with the leaf, you'd cut about a quarter inch shy of the threads all the way around to remove the background fabric and get rid of any shadowing. Now that I'm ready to do the acorn cap, this one's going to be a little more tricky to line up because I want that white line to line up with the edge of this acorn body here. So what I'm going to do is combine that earlier method of pressing under with this second method I tried of having the traced line. So I'm going to put my ironing pressing mat um, back underneath here and make sure my iron is heating up and I'm just going to snip again not into the white line but just up to it just along the curve and I'm just going to do it for now for the side that's going to touch the body of the acorn Okay, so I'm going to fold it back till I see that white line. Just press it. So I don't have the freezer paper in here this time, but I've made some small snips just to get the idea. And if I can see the white line, I know to stop and not roll it back any further. All right, so that's staying pretty well. And then I can see on this side, I don't see the white line on the bottom. I'm just going to give it one more little press there. And so now I can line the acorn up before I tack it down. So I'm going to put my acorn back here. And... And align it to make sure it's touching. I want the stem of the leaf to be touching the stem of the acorn so it can overlap a little or I can move it up where I need to. But those are the key touch points, the stem and the body of the acorn. I want to make sure I don't have you know, a little gap between them but that when I sew it down it will be touching. I'm going to get that into position and then I'll use a little bit of glue and my pin to get it down. And again, we'll just point toward the, make sure the needle's pointing to the outside of the object so I can smooth it, make sure there's no puckers. All right, same thing. I'm just going to stitch all the way around. On the stem where there's these tighter curves, I'm going to use lots of snips just like I did on the tip of the acorn. I decided to change up the layout a bit. I'm going to make the acorns overlap and then have their stems touch on the leaf stem. So that will hide the green leaf of the stem where it just ends. It'll look more like this. So after changing the position of this large acorn, I've decided that doing the same fabric for the cap is not enough contrast. If I had done the fusible 
webbing and stitched outside, maybe I could stitch a color that would show more distinction between the two caps. But I think I'm going to trade the top cap here since it's on the top layer and I don't have to undo all the others. Um, I'll trade that for a different brown for more contrast. The other thing that happened when I moved that acorn is I'm no longer centered. So I have a little more space on this side and more space down at the bottom here. And so that bothers me looking at it. And I thought, well, I could just take everything off and move it around. But now that I see it, I feel like there's still too much empty space for this size. And I could go larger, but the oak leaf is almost the length of a piece of computer paper. And I really want this PDF to be able to, you know, fit each shape on one sheet. So what I think I'm going to do to remedy this is make a border, a little L-shaped border perhaps um, on this side. And then I can trim this down more and get the border pieces to make the block the unfinished side that I need it to be. nice and straight. My zero line is overlapping the edge a bit so it'll cut off these jagged ends here. And then I'm just going to sub cut. Okay, I'm going to take one of my piles and the idea is going to be to nest so that I'm getting this stair step effect here and my seam allowances will nest so I want the corners of each brown piece touching and I'll keep going but I'm going to sew these pieces together next. See when I trim that, it's going to leave me more than a quarter inch away from my side diamonds, which I want because I don't want to have to stitch and watch all these points. I want them to kind of float a little bit without this being too big. So I'm going to cut an inch and a half on this side, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll line it up and cut an inch and a half on the left. Alright, I have my main acorn block all trimmed down to size, and now I'm going to add the trim pieces, which are purposefully longer because I want to be able to center the diamonds with the acorn piece. So when I think I have it centered right in between, and it's not quite as long as from 
acorn to end of leaf. So I want to try and center it in between. But then I'll cut off the sides and I'll stitch these together carefully so I don't stretch these pieces. And then I'll do the same for the side piece, which is also a little longer and I'll need to cut it down. So I'll center it where I want and then trim. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and that will complete the block. So here's one of my finished applique units. And I ultimately decided to add a little decorative border on the side and the bottom because I felt like with this size acorn, there was just too much empty space. And also adding the border let me give more of an illusion of it being centered um, when I didn't quite have it centered before. So that allowed me to adjust it and gave me some flexibility there. If you didn't want the border, then you could enlarge when you print it, like maybe enlarge it to try 120% and see if that makes it just a little bigger. I was trying to keep it so that the leaf would fit on the paper, on a standard piece of computer paper when you print it. And so the leaf, if you enlarge it much more, is gonna go off the paper. And so all printers are different, how that would work out and print. So I was trying to keep it simple, but I thought, it just seemed like too much empty space around it. So I put that decorative border on it, which is definitely optional. It at first was to hide a boo-boo of not centering it well, and I ended up liking it um, and doing it to the second block. And so um, here's that second one. I'll just pin this to the board too. And so it looks very similar, but it just has different fabrics. I also had originally done the same fabric in the acorn tops, but thought that the overlap wasn't distinct enough and I wanted the acorns to really be separate in the tops there. So I just had to pay close attention to kind of where they were hitting the leaf. You know, if there's a little bit of background poking through, I didn't want the bottom of the leaf showing. They intersect kind of in the middle there. So just trying to achieve that look on both of them was what I was aiming for, but they're not going to be exact. And again, that's part of why the borders help because you can create that illusion of being perfectly centered. So that's how the applique block turned out. It was definitely a lot more, this being my first time, um, to put together than the traditionally pieced one, but I did enjoy the process. Once I got the hang of it, it, the second block did come together much more quickly. So I wouldn't shy away from it if you haven't tried needle turn applique before, or maybe search for other methods that might work really well. But that second method worked well for me and I was happy with it. I hope you've enjoyed watching the applique acorn unit come together. This was a fun one, yet challenging with it being my first time doing this method, but I like how it turned out. I think it looks great with the rest of the blocks so far. Next up is going to be the center unit. So it's gonna be a long one that runs from side to side through the center of the quilt, and it's going to feature some scrappy pumpkins. So stay tuned for that. I'm fully back to school now with school starting up in early September. So some of these videos, it's gonna take me a little longer in between um, just with the kickoff of the school year in full swing now. So thank you for being patient, watching these come out. My goal is still to get this done by October and hopefully to a long armor um, so that I can take it out and do some scenic photography in the fall leaves with it. So that's the hope. And if you want to continue watching this process and not miss the next video, make sure that you subscribe. And thank you for giving it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. It really helps my channel out. I will see you next time with some pumpkins.